What's going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo here, back with a new Cheat Engine tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how to use SpeedHack to help you find a function. Alright, so something that the game does, some event that triggers, basically, that function, I'm going to show you uh, kind of a hacky way to find that. There's a much better way to do it. That's uh, under Memory View, Tools, Ultimap. However, that won't work unless you have an Intel CPU that will support using DBVM, which that's for another video, but I will be going over that stuff. So anyway, in the meantime, so what do we have here? This is the game Honey Pop. This is a particular puzzle when you're in the bedroom and you're supposedly banging the chick out or whatever. Um, and then what happens is as your score gets up to a certain point, the bra comes off. All right, that's the function that triggers, that makes the bra come off once your score gets up to a certain point. The problem is this. When you make a match, see how the score counts up and then counts down? So you got to, like, hammer away at this, you know, like making matches like crazy to try to make progress. <clears throat> so what we want to do when you're looking for, like, let's say we want to find the score first because we want to see if there's the function that is checking the score to check for the condition that will then say okay you have enough in your score now the bra comes off right so we want to start by finding the score when it's counting up and down like that it's kind of a pain in the ass we could try looking for increase decrease 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 you know while this is doing this the problem is this and this is the case with this game when it counts up like that all right, that's the GUI that's counting up slowly and then counting down. The actual score in memory, as soon as I make this match, whatever the max number of score is, immediately writes to that address, and then that starts decreasing. So what you get is this. See how that's counting up? And it stopped at about 29 there. In the actual memory address, where it resides, where the score resides, it went from 0 to 29 instantly and then started counting down. Or it might have even gone up to like 35 and started counting down. And then once the GUI catches up with that, then it counts down along with that score. So, where's the problem with that? The problem is that if we make a match here, right, we did a new scan, let's just do a new scan. Unknown initial value. Well, let's not do it yet. I want to do it whenever the score is 0. But right now, the actual score is the max it's going to be, and then it starts counting down. But let's say we searched for 7, and now we search for 13, which it counted up to there. And then we search for another increased value, because it's at 15 now. All right? We would have already missed out on our score. We would find the GUI, but we wouldn't find the score, because the score goes from 0 to max, and then it counts down. Whereas the GUI counts up and down. I know it seems like I'm belaboring that point, but... I really want you to understand kind of what's going on there. So now for us to find that, to make it easier, we can enable speed hack. So I've already set my speed hack to 0 0.1. Click apply. All right. And now see how slowly things happen. So when I make a match, uh, let's do a first scan for, oh, I did, for an unknown initial value. Well, actually, let's do a new scan for 0 because we know current score is 0. All right, now let's uh, make a match. All right, so now we're going to look for an increased value. And see how this is still increasing? If we search for another increased value, our actual score, we wouldn't find it. We would be finding the GUI now. So we can actually start looking for decreased value. Decreased value, decreased value, decreased, 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 decreased. All right, so it's going to be, so there's the GUI right there. All right, let's make a match and see. All right, these are counting up. All right, see how this is counting down, but this is still counting up. So this isn't the GUI, this is the actual score. Now it's counting down, and now when these numbers match, boom, then this starts counting down with the actual score. So there we found our score. This is it. So to test that, we can 
double click on it here and let's say 200. And score starts counting up here, the GUI, but it starts count, it keeps counting down here, the actual score, because that's what the function is telling it to do. So we can look for the function that has to do with countdown and try to stop that. Let's stop the countdown from happening. That could be one thing. Or we want to find the function that removes the bra, which is much more entertaining. So the first thing I'm going to do is disable speed hack, brings it back to normal. Let's right click here and say what accesses the address. We want to see everything that's accessing that address. So this instruction here um, is the one that's writing to the address, right? So it's writing a value to the address. These other instructions are saying, hey, what's, what's your score? What's your score? These things are checking our score and checking for conditions, you know, so they can run certain things, you know. Is your score high enough yet? Can I take the bra off? You know, like one of these instructions is presumably saying that. The hacky part is that unless you're really good with reverse engineering and assembly, which I'm not yet, I plan to be, but I'm not there yet, <laughs> uh, you kind of got to go one by one. And here's what you do. Click Show Disassembler, and the instruction it dumps you off at, it's accessing, okay? Which means it's looking at the value that we have in this address because it wants to do something with that and then down the line check for some condition where it will run the code or not run the code. So that's good for us. It dumps us off at a point that's like, okay, it's checking for my value because it wants to do something. What does it want to do? Something down beneath the instruction here. So, because this is where it dumps it off at right now, this is taking our current score and putting it in the EAX register. This one is taking max score. If you uh, disassembled the structure, you would see that this offset here is max score. This is current score, this is max score. And it's putting max score in ECX. Then it compares max score with current score. So compare max with current because those two values are what were written to those individual registers. Then this says jump if equal. If those two values are equal, which I did a previous video talking about the zero flag and how that works, so go check that out. If they're equal, then go to this memory address, which Cheat Engine shows you is right here. If the jump was farther and the error didn't pop up, you could right click and say follow. And then from wherever it took you to, you could say back to get back to your spot. So you could do that, right? So here's what you want to do, basically. Where it dumps you out at, you want to bypass either the compare or the jump. You want to knock the jump out and see what happens when this code runs, regardless of if your two values are equal or not. All right? So basically, you if you do this, you will crash your game. At some point, you'll crash your game because, you know, you could check to see, like, uh, find what addresses this instruction accesses to see if there are more than your this one address that this instruction messes with. Because sometimes you'll find an instruction that's constantly writing to tons of addresses. And if you knop that instruction out, replace with code that does nothing, you're going to crash your game. So expect that to happen <laughs> when you try this, all right? So... You find your way to where the instruction is accessing the address you're in. You look down, you find a jump, JMP, JE, JNE, whatever, and you right click on it and you say replace with code that does nothing and you see what happens. Does your game crash? Does this disappear? Duh, you know, like, can you move anymore? Like, what actually happens? You know what I mean? Um, and it's just a process of trial and error like that. This is the really hackish way to do it. So eventually what happens is, I kind of know what it, it looks like already. Okay. So with this one, it dumped me out here, right? I'm on that second instruction. It dumped me out here. It looks similar to the last thing that we did. It's taking current score, putting it in EAX. It's taking max score. It's putting that in EDX. It's moving EDX to ECX, so now our value that was here, it's still in EDX for the time being. Move is like copy. Move doesn't remove it from where it's being moved from. It copies it. So EDX still technically has max score in it. All right? 
shift right, uh, 1F, ECX, you got to look at what shift right means. Shift right essentially means unsigned divide by 2 31 times. <laughs> Google that. I, I don't want to try to explain that right now. Um, but anyway, and then we're adding, and then we are doing more stuff through here, and eventually you get to a compare. You don't need to necessarily read through all this stuff or know what it is. You just want to go from where this took you to when you said show disassembler and look for the first jump that you see. And this is a jump if less or equal. So if I knock that out, then what happens? So we're going to click on the game here and replace with code that does nothing. Say okay. My cat just me. I don't know if you heard that, but anyway. And there you go. So we found the function that removes the bra once the score is high enough. Cool. Now we can right click on here and say restore with original code. If you've closed everything out and you're like, oh man, I don't know where that code is or whatever, you can go to your advanced options here and any code changes you make, it'll list that here. So anyway, now what you could do is say, um, you could look through here um, and because we want to knop this out, which means just replace these two bytes with 9090. A NOP replaces a byte with 90, which tells, which says do nothing. That's what it means, do nothing. So this would be a very simple cheat to do. You could do tools, auto assemble, template, AOB injection. All right. And then we'll call this AOB insta topless. All right. Let me make this T. So this will do the AOB scan, which you can check for. The cool thing is you don't need to allocate new memory because what we want to do is really, 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 really simple. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and register a symbol called AOB Insta Topless. All right. All that we want to do is change. See right here, this is our jump if less than or equal to, and it's got some dereferenced memory address there. We don't want that. We want to take the array of bytes that it finds here. 70, 2, 3, those two bytes represent this instruction. Okay. And we just want to say DB for declare byte 9090. And that's it. That's all you've got to do change this to this unregister symbol AOB insta topless all right perfect so now that we've got that <clears throat> what what happens what does this mean this means when you enable the script cheat engine is going to search for this array of bytes all right when it finds that array of bytes, it's going to say, what do you want me to do with these array of bytes? So it goes here to check for what it should do. So that's what we're saying here. At AOB Insta Topless. Actually, let's make it case uh, appropriate there. Um, declare byte 9090. So AOB Topless starts here. All right. If we wanted this declare byte to start on this byte, then what we would have to do is say plus one plus two. All right. So insta topless plus two would then declare nine zero nine zero here and here. All right. So if you wanted it here, this is the zero, one, two, three, four. You'd go plus four, and then DB would declare byte 9090 here and here. All right, so that's how that works. And then when you disable the script, it just looks at Instatopolis, and it's going to declare byte 7E23, which is the instruction that was originally there. So once enabled, this will suddenly become, I mean, you won't see it in the script, but in code, it would be this. 
whenever we enable. Then when we disable, 723. File, assign to current sheet table. Now what you can do to make sure that this array of byte is unique enough, you could actually come into Cheat Engine and say new scan, array of byte, paste it here. Make sure you have this set to that, so it'll check read and write. And then you do first scan. And if it only finds one, you're good to go. If it finds more than one, Cheat Engine, once it does the scan from your script, the first result it finds, it'll write that value to, so you could crash your game. That's why you want your array of byte signatures to be unique. All right. So then all that you've got to do is enable the script. And you see, we can see it happen here. Right. This is where that jump is. Jump if less than that we found our way to. Boom, we enable it. Nop, nop. That's it. It keeps going. We didn't allocate new memory. We don't need to inject code. We're not having anything jump anywhere. All that we've done is uh, registered a symbol, which is this, so that now we could reference that elsewhere. You know, we could say AOB insta topless. If for some reason we wanted to find our way to this address, you know, and then you could right click and say. Uh, browse, browse this memory region, or yeah. So anyway, it's just it gives you the option to re you could reference that in different scripts. You know, like let's say technically what we could do in the script is not do any of this. We could just have it to where you enable the script. It'll do the search. It'll apply the symbol, and then. In another script, you could have it reference that and declare by it whenever you enable and disable that script. So that's what register symbol does for you. Anyway, so yeah, you got to see some cartoon boobies. Well, not really, because I'm going to blur it out because of, uh, you know, I want to make sure everything's good to go on the tubes, YouTubes. But uh, yeah, mess around with it, crash some video games. You know, like, if you get into this stuff and you care about the game, you have saves and you care about that data, make sure you back that stuff up before you do this. You know, move it somewhere else because you could corrupt data. You know, you could do all kinds of stuff by crashing games. Um, so just be aware of that. But otherwise, have fun, man. Crash the game. <laughs> and, you know, that's really how you learn. All right, so soon I'm going to do a video talking about uh, DBVM. Dark Byte Virtual Machine, what it's good for, how you enable it, why you enable it, uh, Ultimap, like how that relates to it, um, and all that good stuff. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and subscribe if you're not yet, and check out my other videos, and do all that. So yeah. All right. Thanks again. See you all in the next video. Take care.